Welcome to the GivesCam 2015 video number two. Today we're going to talk about tool lists. In previous versions of Gibbs, you could create tool lists, but they were always tied to processes. For instance, if you had 10 tools, you would need to create 10 processes, uh, and then you could save it for that particular machine. Well, now Gibbs has separated that, so it makes it a little bit easier now. So you can create your tool list and save it to a particular machine. So I've already created some tool lists. I'll just show you how to bring them in. Just go to a blank spot anywhere on the tool list and right click, then click on where it says load tools. Now here I have a number of tool lists here for four different types of machines. I'm just going to start out with the NH4000, for instance, and I'm just going to pick my standard list there. Click open. And you can see it fills in the tools. Um, you can have, of course, up to 9,999 tools. But here's your tool list. Of course, you can move them around as you need to, just uh, like in previous versions. And to save a tool list, once you've created one, just highlight all the tools, holding the shift key down, just like you would in, in uh, Windows uh, Explorer, and highlight all the tools, right click on any of them that's highlighted, click on Save Selected Tools, and then you could give it a name for that particular tool list, or create a folder for a machine and save it to that uh, machine. Now let me delete these. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're uh, creating a tool list or saving a tool list or bringing it back in is this button down here that says preserve tool number. I'm going to click on this list that says short tool list here and by clicking on preserve tool number it's going to keep them separate where I have blanks in my machine magazine. So you can see um, magazine number five, I have no tool in there, and so it keeps it blank there. So if I were to just highlight all these, and we're going to get rid of them again. I'm going to bring back the tool list again, the same tool list, short tool list, but this time I'm going to uncheck this preserved tool number and click on open. And you're going to see it takes out all the blank tools and moves them all up. Now, normally I would say you don't want to do that because uh, you're going to uh, now change the tools. So this tool, this 3 8 end mill, previously might have been in the magazine number 6 or number 7. And now since it's a blank field, it moved it, it, moved it up to uh, magazine number 6. So might not be uh, something you'd want to do. So be very careful with that. So that's why I always click on this button, preserve tool number. That way, if you have a uh, magazine list that has some blank spots in there, it'll preserve that tool location so your tools don't disappear there. Now, some new tools Gibbs has created in this latest version. Uh, fly cutters now, you have the ability to uh, give it a particular angle here and some more radiuses and minimum diameter things like that uh, for face cutters. Some new tools as well. You have a lollipop that's been in there for a while but uh, they've enhanced that a little bit and you do have barrel cutters now and the same thing with the dovetail cutters they've enhanced that a little bit on the angles and some of the radiuses things like that. And taps really hasn't changed uh, in the last few years. The nice thing about uh, when you're working with taps, especially metric taps, uh, most of the machines in USA are in inches, so you need to program in inches. Well, if you're cutting a metric tap, and metric taps always go by lead, if it was a 1.5 millimeter lead, you just type that in the millimeter, and that gives you the threads per inch, 16.9333, and that's what you would use, of course, uh, when you're tapping on an inch machine. Corner rounders. I've uh, changed that a little bit there. And of course, form tools. Now you can create any kind of form tool you want in Gibbs. All you need to do is create a work group for that particular tool. Here I have another one there. You can see some of them I have here. You can create any kind of uh, tool holder just by drawing half the um, geometry of the part. Highlight that geometry, click on Apply, and you can see now uh, it applies here in this uh, 
uh, view window here, also over here. Okay, also on these tools, you have the ability to do a straight cut, step shank, or taper shank, and you still have the ability, of course, under the options to do a tapered end mill with a straight shank, tapered shank, or straight, and fill in the blanks there what you need. And now a couple things down here. You can turn on the tool holder if you want to see the tool holder. You can move that around by holding the control key down just like you do on the standard screen. You can move it around. You can pan up or down, zoom up or down, pan. Okay. But you can also dynamically rotate that in space. I'm just using a space navigator, so which makes it very handy for your tools. Let's close a couple of these things up here. Also with uh, the new version, you have the ability to bring in solve models from various uh, uh, vendors of machine tools. And we, uh, we can also use the Advion. I'm going to bring up Advion so you can kind of see what it looks like. This was created by Sandvik. It's the first ISO uh, standard tool library for tools. And others will be getting on board as well, like Iskar, Kenametal, uh, and the rest of them when they come up with the, uh, uh, when they adhere to the ISO standard on here. So I've created some assemblies here. And if I list my assemblies, you can see I've just created three different tools, three different assemblies in Adbeon. And then we'll just import those. You just click on import, and it'll import them into the Gibbscam library for you. So in order to bring that up, just go to the plugins and click on Adbeon Tool Manager. And this is the Adbeon screen here. And you can see there's some, uh, there's my two end mills there and my fly cutter there, face mill there. So if I want to bring in this um, uh, three-quarter inch end mill, I've created an Adbeon here. And you can see you have the tool holder, everything uh, associated with it. I just click on Import Tool. And you can see it has now created uh, a tool here with everything about the tool, the cutter, and as well as the holder. So this is the Sandvik holder associated with that assembly. And you can do that with, uh, of course, any of them. If I want to bring in the half inch uh, end mill, click on Import Tool. And you can see here's the one with the half inch with the holder and everything. So you, if you want to render using the holder uh, that you purchased from Sandvik, uh, you can do that or other holders as well when they come on board here. Just to show you a little bit of that, let's just do a just a roughing process with that particular tool. We'll just go down this cavity real quickly here. Just going to cut these two cavities here. And as we render, you're going to see the tool holder that you created from the Sandvik library there. So there's the holder, the collet, the end mill, everything about that. So if you want to see your tools as they actually are, then you can do that through Adbeon. You can also import the 3D models from uh, other tool vendors as well, but Advion makes it kind of nice. Also under the tool list, you have the tool manager. This is going to bring up, uh, kind of looks like a spreadsheet here, and you can do global uh, editing of the whole, all the tool lists if you'd like, or just some of them. So if you click on this button right here, it's going to bring up a warning, say, be careful editing. It's just a warning there. Let's say I for, uh, forgot to add 15 thou radiuses to the corners of all these tools here. So you just highlight the tool with the corner radius you want. And let's hold the shift key down, highlight all the tools I want to do a global edit to. Go back up to the 15 thou radius, right click, click on where it says apply value to selected tools. 
and now you'll see all those tools that are selected now have a 15 thou corner radius. That's also available over here for your operation manager. You can do the same thing over there. You have an operation manager over there, which we'll show you in another video on that one. Thank you for watching this video.